before getting into today's stories, I want to thank Fume for sponsoring this video. Do you have a bad habit that you need to drop? Almost everybody's got at least one. Not every bad habit is wrong per se, but instead of going through with uncomfortable, stressful changes, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume has just the solution to that. They offer an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that doesn't use electronics or harmful chemicals. Instead, it just uses all-natural delicious flavors. Fume makes replacing your bad habit really easy in an all-natural and guilt-free way. Base was launched in January. It's a weighted stand to rest your fume on when not in use, with a magnet inside that keeps your fume attached. The fume device can be spun around on it, which is good for fidgeting. Crisp mint is my favorite flavor, and orange vanilla is a close second. Stopping a bad habit is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has had thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash nightmare or scan the QR code and use code nightmare to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. It was supposed to be one of, if not the last delivery of the night for me. I was working at this pizzeria called Leonardo's. One of my bosses, Frank, was on the night shift with me. He would choose who does what delivery. We got an order for a couple regular pizzas. He gave me a piece of paper with the address on it and the person's phone number. This was in 2009. I didn't have a cell phone that had GPS, just a bare bones flip phone. I also didn't have one of those garment GPSs. I still had to use an old school book of maps to find my way around when doing deliveries. The name of the street that this house I was doing my last delivery for was something along the lines of Willows Road. I can't remember the house number, nor do I remember the name given for the order, but I do remember having the hardest time finding the place. It was in this really rural town with nothing but woods, farmland, and more woods. The lack of streetlights also didn't help. I had to pull over a few times and turn on the interior lights as I checked the map again. It was a very stress-inducing situation whenever I couldn't find a house. I was on a very quiet, dark, and confusing road when I decided to just call the number on the paper my boss gave me. The phone rang a bunch of times. It seemed that there was no answering machine set up to it. It had to have rung about 10 times before someone picked up, and I waited for someone to say hello. When no one did, I said it and then a voice on the other end said it back. It was a low, deep, yet soft voice. I said this is the pizza guy, I'm just having a hard time finding your place. He explained that his driveway was easy to miss and looks like just a dirt trail. He talked in a very slow, monotone voice as he described the surroundings of his driveway to help me find it, and eventually I did. I turned my car onto this pretty narrow dirt path. It was definitely easy to miss. It took about 30 seconds of me driving slowly and carefully up it until I saw this small, one-story house come into view. There was a faint orange glow from inside the house that could be seen through one of the windows. I parked my car next to the only other vehicle in sight, this jalopy of the pickup truck. I grabbed the two pizzas from the passenger seat and walked to the front door of the house. I looked for a doorbell, couldn't find one, so I knocked on the door. I heard muffled music from inside the house. Then I heard footsteps approaching the door, stop, and then after maybe 10 seconds, the door cracked open and I saw a quarter of someone's face. I literally could just see one of their eyes peeking out at me. I nervously said, hey, you ordered the pizza, right? The guy said, oh yes, the pizza. I recognized the voice from the phone call from before. There was a weird pause. I didn't know what to say, except for, do you have the cash? He said, yes, let me go get it. He walked away from the door, and I heard his footsteps move to another room. There was super old music from like the 1930s playing, making the setting just extra creepy and weird, if it weren't creepy enough already. Then the door started slowly inching open on its own, revealing more and more of this dimly lit room. Everything about the interior of this place seemed super old. There were metal sheets on the floor, presumably covering holes in the floor. The couch looked like it was from a different century. Hell, all of the furniture did. And the music was coming from a vintage-looking record player, one of those with the big horn-like thing at top. 
That's all I could see at first from just sneaking a nosy peek inside the place. But what really was off-putting was the smell. It smelled like death in there. I waited respectfully for the guy to come back with the money from wherever he went. When enough time passed that I felt like it was getting weird, I knocked on the open door, took a peek inside, and said, Sir? The man's voice came from another room, saying, Yes, would you mind coming into the kitchen, please? My coworkers and bosses always advised against stepping into anyone's house if you didn't have to. That advice seemed especially relevant for this circumstance. I heard what the man said, but I still responded, Can you repeat that? He repeated, Can you come to the kitchen, please? I stepped inside and I honestly felt like my feet were going to crash through the floor. The place was so old that the floor actually caved in a bit as I stepped around. The house was very linear. I looked to the right and saw the entrance to the kitchen, where his voice was coming from. I looked to the left, and there was a narrow hallway which had a bunch of doors on the right side. At the end of the hallway, there was this guy with his back to me, slowly dancing in the creepiest way imaginable. The man was feeling himself, I don't mean he felt confident, I mean he was literally feeling his body as he moved in this really off-putting way. In any other circumstance I would laugh, but I was downright disturbed of what kind of house I would just walked into. I turned away and looked to the kitchen, still holding these two pizza boxes. I took a few steps toward the kitchen, before I even noticed the person peering around the edge of the wall separating the kitchen from the living room. It was that man's face again, still only showing like a quarter of his face. Just one of his eyes creepily peering at me. The only thoughts I had in this moment were what the fuck and should I just leave? I repeated what I said at the front door moments ago, asking him again if he has the cash. The man didn't respond. He started to just giggle, or I don't even know what I'd call it, because the laugh was so deep in pitch but it was so subtle and soft. Then he called out Randall in a startlingly loud voice, much louder and more commanding in tone than his previous soft-spoken monotone voice. I was at my limit of how much weirdness I could take. I turned around and started walking back to the front door, and as I took a look down the hallway as I was about to walk outside, I noticed that guy who was dancing seconds ago was now simply just standing there, looking back at me. I left through the front door and closed it behind me. I hurried back to the car for some reason still holding the pizzas. I threw the pizza boxes in the passenger seat and got back in the car as quickly as possible. As I was backing my car up to clear the pickup truck next to it so that I could just do a three-point turn, I did look back at the house, and the door was fully open again. My heart started beating even quicker at the thought that one of them was outside my car about to attempt to open one of the doors. Maybe they were, and I'll never know, but I managed to get my car down that dirt driveway and back onto the road. I had to return to the pizzeria. I called Frank to let him know what happened. He wasn't mad at me. When I got back to the pizzeria, everyone laughed when I told them what happened. I can honestly see how it sounds like a funny situation when explaining it to others, but it was not funny in the moment. Whatever was going on in that house wasn't normal, and I don't think they had any intentions of buying pizza. I've had multiple dreams where I would see that man's face just peeking around from behind a wall. After that, I didn't enter anyone's houses or apartments while doing deliveries. I'm currently 20 years old, although at the time of the story I was 19. I live in Newark, Delaware, a usually small and quiet town. That is, until college season rolls around in the fall and spring. Newark is home to the University of Delaware, which is a large and widely respected school in the U.S. It also has a reputation for being a big party school, so when the college kids arrive, things get a lot more lively. Anyway, I work as a bicycle delivery guy at Jimmy John's, a job I still work as of me telling the story. This event took place during a Tuesday or Wednesday night in the spring. It was either late April or early May, I can't remember exactly. It was my typical 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift. The Jimmy John's I work at is open until 2 on the weekdays and 3 on the weekends. This means we're one of the few places still open in town aside from the bars, so a lot of drunk college kids storm the place wanting to order. Needless to say, it gets pretty hectic. 
Deliveries would pop up like crazy too, which did get very annoying, but it meant a lot of tips, so I always put up with it. This was my last night working the shift, and just as 2am was about to roll around, one last delivery came in, and I was next in line to take it. This annoyed me as I just wanted to end my shift and go home to get some sleep. I sucked it up and took the delivery since I didn't have a choice. I knew the street by heart and knew where to go immediately. I should mention the reason we do bicycle deliveries is because the roads tend to be busy sometimes during college season, so using bicycles sometimes allows us to do deliveries faster. I rode my bike as fast as I could to the house in less than 10 minutes. I knocked on the door loudly, but there was no answer. I knocked again, louder this time. Still nothing. I became a little pissed when I remembered if someone didn't come out, I'd have to take the order back to the store, meaning this delivery would seriously be wasting my time. I called the number on the receipt, but no one answered. I was getting ready to call the store when I first heard it. Rustling sounds coming from some bushes directly across the street from me. I figured it was probably the wind, but decided to look anyway. When I did, I felt my stomach drop as a strong sense of dread flowed through me. I saw the dark figure of a person directly across the street from me in someone's yard, crouched behind a few bushes, and even though I couldn't make out any facial features, I knew that he or she, though I figured it was a he, was looking right at me. My heart was racing, but it didn't seem like he noticed that I noticed him. I pretended to not notice him and knocked loudly on the door again. Still, there was no answer. I began to grow more and more panicked, wondering whether or not this could be a trap. I did a quick glance, and the person was still crouched behind the bushes, watching me. I just wanted to get the hell out of there, so I decided to just continuously knock on the door as loud as possible until someone answered. It felt like hours that I was knocking, but eventually someone stumbled out from one of the rooms and sluggishly answered the door sounding pissed. When I told him about the order, he told me that he didn't order so that it was probably his roommate instead. To my misfortune, the person who actually ordered was upstairs in his room passed out drunk. How he could have passed out so quickly after he ordered is still beyond me. The guy went upstairs to try and get him. Not even a minute after he went upstairs, I suddenly heard more rustling and did a quick glance back. When I did, I noticed the man had moved a little closer, probably to get a better view of me. I could tell he was still watching me. My fear intensified. I almost wanted to come inside to get away from the man watching me, but I figured he'd steal my bike, meaning I couldn't do my job anymore. Plus, I didn't know if this person was armed and if he would actually try something if I went inside, which would put the two of them in harm's way. Luckily, he was only upstairs for a minute. He said his roommate's door was locked and that he wouldn't answer the door when he knocked. At this point, I really wanted to get out of there, so I told him he could sign for his roommate's order. He hesitated at first since there wasn't a tip charged to the order, but a tip was the last thing I was thinking about at this point. I insisted over and over, and eventually he signed for his roommate. I handed it to him and gave him a quick thank you. When he shut the door, I hurried to my bike and hopped on, ready to get the hell out of there. But just as I put the kickstand up, I heard the man suddenly lunge out from behind the bushes. I quickly turned to my left and saw that man was now dashing towards me. I was able to see he was wearing what looked like jeans, boots, and a black hoodie with the hood over his head, and what I think was some sort of mask on his face as I could only see his eyes. And although I'm not 100% on this, it looked like he was holding a blade in one of his hands. I knew I had to act quick. I couldn't bang a U-turn because he'd probably catch me before I could get away. To make matters worse, all the surrounding streets led to dead ends. My only chance was to head to a bike trail that was nearby, even though it wasn't lit up and I didn't have a light on my bike. I knew it would be my only chance. I pedaled faster than I ever had before onto the pitch black trail and rode it, all while looking out for shadows and listening for footsteps. Luckily the trail wasn't long and I knew it by heart. Still, I was extremely paranoid by this point, and I got startled whenever I heard any noise at all. I didn't see the man while I was on the trail, however, and I made it back to the store safely. I was hyperventilating like crazy as I tried to wrap my head around what the hell just happened. I didn't tell my boss or co-workers, nor did I call the police since I didn't get a good look at the man. I simply got my stuff, clocked out, and went to my car, putting my bike in the trunk, so thankful I decided to drive that night. 
I made it home safe without anyone following me, and that was that. I never saw the man again. I don't know what he wanted, whether he wanted to rob me or worse. I haven't worked another midnight shift since then, and now I carry nunchucks on me whenever I do any kind of night shift. Newark isn't known for being a dangerous town, so the fact that this happened here truly showed me that anything can happen anywhere, to anyone at any time, no matter how safe or dangerous the area may be. I used to deliver for Uber Eats. I was having trouble paying off my student loans, so I was hustling to make whatever cash I could. I still lived with my parents at the time. It was late at night. I was picking up an order from some fast food place in Wilmington, North Carolina, and delivering to some house about 20 minutes away. I often did late night deliveries and Uber rides because the pay was higher and I could bang out more deliveries and rides without traffic. I was already en route to the address. I was leaving the more populated residential area of Wilmington and heading in the direction of the quieter part with all the forest and farms. Most of the roads over there were pitch black and void of any other cars at that late hour in the night. I turned off the main road onto a side road with a dead end sign. This was the road the directions were taking me, where the address was. I was brought to the last house on this road. The lights to almost every little house on this stretch were off. It was just pitch black. Even the house that I was supposed to be delivering the food to. I had to keep my car headlights on just to even see and just so I wouldn't trip on anything. I also was using my flashlight on my phone to navigate my way to the porch of this house. I'm not lying when I say there was not a single light on. I even felt the overgrown grass rubbing on my shins as I walked to the front door. This didn't feel right. I pressed the doorbell button but didn't hear a ring, so I knocked. The customer had their delivery preference to be contact delivery, which means I'd have to actually physically hand it off to him or her. I messaged the customer that I'm at the front door and asked him if he could confirm the address. He read it right away and responded, give me a second. I replied, okay. He read it. I waited in the dark, looking at the windows of the house, waiting for a light inside to turn on. I was thinking there's no way this is the right house. I followed up again, asking him if he could type out his address. He started typing. It took a while before he sent a message saying, I see you, you're at the right house. The next thing I realized was that there were no cars anywhere. This was making no sense. I asked the customer to confirm what kind of car he sees outside. He replied that he sees my light. Well, that pretty much confirmed that I was at the correct address, but it didn't make this any less sketchy. I started to just inch away from the door to the house just because I didn't want to be on top of it as they opened the door. But the door never opened, no matter how many times I messaged the customer on the Uber Eats app. I was starting to suspect this was some kind of scam to get free food. Then I heard a voice come from outside in the darkness surrounding me. It was a male's voice calling over here. I started to wave my flashlight all over the place, trying to reveal whoever just said that. I said out loud, I'm leaving the food on the front porch over here. I didn't know who I was talking to, nor could I see them. I was terrified I was about to be attacked, so I walked back to my car, not trying to draw attention by running. When I got to my car, I heard this distinct air leaking sound that I could immediately recognize to be the sound of air leaking from a slashed tire. I took a look and saw that both the tires on the left side of the car were slashed and leaking air. I could only assume in the moment that the two tires on the right side had also been slashed. I got into the car and locked the doors first thing. All four tires showed low tire pressure warnings on the dash. Panic started to set in. I was deciding on whether to call the police and wait in the car or making a run for it into the dark to a nearby house. I was about to pick the second option. I turned off the headlights on my car and was about to get out of the car but I noticed someone standing outside my window. I screamed my soul out, and then I realized that there were at least four people standing outside of my car, one at every window. They all had on masks covering their faces. I was surrounded. One of them yelled at me to get out of the car now. I didn't know if one of them had a gun or not, and I knew that if they did, by the time I turn on the car and attempt to drive away with four flats, I'd have been shot dead already. I yelled through the window asking if they're just looking to rob me, and one of them said if I gave them everything on me, they'd let me go. 
I agreed to do so and unlocked the door. The second I did, the guy outside my door opened it and forcefully pulled me out. At this point, I was beaten and kicked by at least three of the guys. They grabbed everything off of me. My smartwatch, my shoes, my wallet, my phone, and even some things out of my glove compartment in my car. I was left on the ground as however many men there actually were ran away into the darkness, and I was alone. I blacked out from here, and the next thing I remember is waking up probably half an hour later still laying on the grass next to my car. They'd stolen even my keys. I managed to get up and navigate myself to the nearest source of light I could find in the distance, which was a small house all the way up the street closer to the main road. I rang the bell a few times until someone answered through the closed door. I said I'd been injured and robbed and need to use a phone. Luckily, the woman was willing to help and allowed me to use a phone to call the police and then to call roadside assistance to have my car towed. Lastly, I called my dad. After police showed up, I was taken back to my car and they did a short investigation and took as much information as I could give them. After my car was towed away, my dad came to pick me up and bring me home. We left after my car was towed away. My phone's last location was down the street from the incident and it hadn't been turned on since the night before, meaning they probably destroyed the phone. The next day, I gave even more information to some detectives regarding my Uber Eats account and they rather quickly were able to trace the customer account back to a guy named Logan, who long story short, allegedly lost his phone and wallet, and whoever found or stole them was the one to call the Uber Eats delivery with the intention of robbing me. Basically what I'm saying is whoever did this to me got away with it. The house that they set this up at was a vacant house for sale. My car tires were covered by insurance, but everything else I ate the loss. And this was a painful and expensive, but also valuable lesson to not be so naive ever again in a situation like that. I stopped deliveries for a few months. Then I went back to doing daytime deliveries. 